Good afternoon to all and welcome to our sixth session of Asia Water 2020 Technology Symposium. Before we start, there's a few rules that we have to add here. All microphone and video of attendees have been mute. If you have any question, please wait for the Q&A session or do list them down at the Q&A box. If there any internet disruption during the session, kindly be patient and try to sign in again. In this session, we will have Mr. Ed Gelderblom from Krohn to do the presentation. Mr. Ed Gelderblom has been the technical manager of Division Waste and Wastewater since the 2018. However, he has been working with Krohn for more than 30 years within different divisions of R&D, production and product management. Specifically, in the last role as product management, he has deepened his knowledge in the field of business processes in water and wastewater utilities. In general, the Global Industry Division for W and WW is in charge of supporting the respective countries concerning the product portfolio for the waste and wastewater industry. International requirements of operator will be collected, structured and prioritized to ensure the successful development of tomorrow. Furthermore, to the technical focus, the division is also in charge of industry-related li marketing issues. With that, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Ed Calderblom to do his presentation. Sir, the floor is yours. Hello from Germany, everybody. Hello from Duisburg. Welcome to the today's webinar session. I would like to introduce you to our topic today, key me measuring devices and features in water and wastewater applications. Um, our presenter for today, Michael Ram. Hello, Michael. Um, before we start with the webinar, uh, some information for you. Um, all of you are muted. And if you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat. Uh, the chat box on the right hand side. Um, we try to answer all your questions after the webinar. If there are too many questions, of course, we will try to answer them after the webinar um, by email. Okay, so Michael. Well, thank you very much, Fabian, for the nice introduction. So I would also like to welcome you to the today's uh, webinar session. It's a great pleasure for me to be the speaker today. And first of all, I would like to introduce myself. Um, well, my name is uh, Michael Rumpf and um, I'm 39 years old, unmarried and the father of a cute two years old daughter. So I'm a diploma water resources management engineer and I'm working with Krona since more than 15 years so far. So within Krona, I started in 2006 uh, within the German water and wastewater department. And after two years, I changed over to the international strategical marketing department. And since 2016, I'm leading the global industry division for water and wastewater. So we will switch off our cameras right now just uh, to have the full focus on the presentation and also to save some streaming data to guarantee a fluent presentation. And afterwards, after the presentation, we will be back with our faces for the Q&A session. So have a nice presentation. Well, the today's presentation will last about 45 to 60 minutes and cover the following agenda points. First of all, I would like to give you a short introduction in the scope of industry and trends. Uh, I will put the focus of today's core topic, which are the key products and key features within the water and wastewater industry. Last but not least, I will give you a short introduction into an uh, online planning tool and a short summary of the topic today. This is an overview of our precious industry. Actually, the industry consists of two major parts, which are demonstrated here in this picture. The water industry, which is covered by the upper section of the picture and which is normally consisting of three different sub-industries, which are the water abstraction with the deep water wells, desalination plants or large water dams, followed by the water treatment, 
with the waterworks and finally the water supply with the distribution networks and the water reservoirs. So the wastewater industry is covered by the lower section of the picture and normally consists of five sub-industries which are the influent with its wastewater network and stormwater reservoirs, the mechanical pretreatment, the biological treatment, the sludge treatment and finally the effluent. The water market is big, water surrounds us everywhere and anytime. So, and here you wonderfully see all the different fields of working places and applications where we are covering with our measuring instrumentation such as industrial areas, ag agriculture, water supply, wastewater deduction, water abstraction, commercial billing and process water to just name some of it. The water and wastewater industry is evolving and growing rapidly. The operators of today's plants are faced by major challenges due to the availability of more and more complex technologies which are penetrating the market. Due to the fact that they need to cover that higher scope with less and less employees and also less and less high skilled technicians, they are highly requiring support from the suppliers. The operators require fully matched solutions which are covering the scope from the field device up to the integration into the SCADA system. They of course require high sophisticated market oriented and price attractive measuring devices. They of course as well require additional features to have an added value. So all in all they need to be supported with extended services, efficient engineering and extended application support. So the global industry division of water and wastewater is responsible to bring this aligned. Well, the known challenges of the future's water industry are known to almost every one of us. So it's a global concern and will affect nearly half of the population by 2030. Therefore, already today, huge investments are made, for example, in infrastructure. Possibilities to reduce the cost per cubic meter treated water and also wastewater are one of the main future trends. So most of the today's operators are becoming an efficiency manager who are requiring accurate and robust measuring technologies. Furthermore, they are calling for multi-parameter measuring technologies to extend the available process information and last but not least, smart and remote data transmission. All this is the basis for such optimizations. However, to make a process more efficient, you need data and thus the trends, the trends words of more data, big data, smart data or real-time data are omnipresent. So what key products can lead us to achieve such goals? Next to available solutions, which could consist of complete water skits and services, which could be complete data services and data products, we will today set our focus to dedicated key products in key water and wastewater applications. What is most important today, not only to offer your product in a catalog or on a website, the offers are so huge today that the operators of plants often are overstrained and confused what's best for its process. So the working principle might be similar with competitive, competitive devices and also the common requirements or general use cases can be covered. But most interesting of today's operators are the special devices which are made for dedicated applications and markets as well as the reliability of those in not standard applications. First of all, we would start with a special flow meter, which is dedicated for the water industry to measure flow in water abstraction, irrigation, distribution or leakage detection. This flow meter can be connected to several converter units to provide different features such as signal communication or also different power supply options. The Waterflux 3070, for example, is a complete standalone energy autarkic water meter, which will be battery operated. So independent of the connected converter, this flow meter can be installed without the need of any straight inlet or outlet sections. In fact, covering the whole diameter range from diameter 25, so one inch, to diameter 600, what is 24 inch. Thus, installations demonstrated on the picture are possible. Without exception, you can install the flow meter directly after a pump 
what the application picture on the left hand side is showing or even a double 90 degree bend is possible showing the customer application picture on the right hand side. Another important feature of this water meter is the option to have an integrated pressure and temperature sensor which can be used to monitor leakages during the night. A pressure drop in one DMA district metering area could indicate a possible leakage, therefore an action is required. So a pressure drop in multiple DMAs at the same time can have another root cause, for example a national TV event like a football match where no action is required then. Another application in which pressure is mandatory is to monitor pumps and valves in a water supply network. So normally you have two pressure transmitters to measure the pre-pressure and the back pressure of a valve, which is behind the pump for example. This is important because behind the valve are perhaps 10 bar because of the geodetic pressure, depending on the type of network what is behind. In front of the valve are perhaps only one bar. So if the valve now open, there would be a backflow through the pump, what may damage the pump. Therefore, the pump is pumping against the closed valve until the pre and the post pressure before and behind the valve are approximately the same and then opens the valve only to ensure a flow in the right direction. So an integrated pressure sensor within the flow meter, what is also required to measure the flow, is therefore interesting to at least cover one of the required pressure sensors. Next to an analog one, before the valve can, for example, be powered uh, by a battery operated GSM module, which is also transmitting all the signals to a remote control room. The temperature sensor will often be used for monitoring to prevent the growth of bacteria like Legionella, which can occur when a certain drinking water temperature has exceeded. How can we achieve this unique feature, no inlet and no outlet sections? Well, the flow meter water flux is built to have a flow optimized pipe construction, what you can see on the right hand side picture. Thanks to the rectangular cross section, special plate coils are used, what you can see on the picture above, which provide a homogeneous magnetic field at all positions, even at the edges, making measurement independent of the flow profile. The unique pipe cross section acts as a kind of venturi pipe, what you can see on the colored pictures on the left hand side. After a 90 degree bend, we have so many different colors which display different flow velocities, but within the measuring tube where the signal is grabbed, we have a homogeneous flow profile available which guarantees the most accurate measuring result. Therefore, we do not have any restrictions concerning the installation position of this key flow meter. Next unique feature of that key product is the possibility for a direct subsoil installation like you can see on the different pictures. This is done more and more often to save money instead of an expensive manhole which costs three times of the price. More and more operators exclude the flow meter from the manholes where valves and, uh, valves and pumps are installed to have a smaller manhole which saves money. In this case, the flow meter will be installed just beside the pumping station within the ground. You just need a smaller low priced plastic chamber for the converter and maybe the GSM module. Of course, the meter is coming with a special subsoil coating and stainless steel connection box, which is fully potted and fully IP68, which means NEMA 6P. Next key product is a special flow meter for pressureless pipelines, which can be partially filled mostly used in wastewater networks, sewage treatment plant inlets or rainwater or stormwater pipe networks. So this MAC meter is working like a conventional MAC meter, but with an additional capacitive level measurement, which is integrated behind the coating and therefore without contact to the medium. So even when hydrogen sulfide occurs, this guarantees a complete corrosive free measuring when the level in the pipe is going up and down. This meter comes with an explosion certification class 1 division 2 which is required in the applications where that flow meter is used. Comparing this flow meter with the competitive ones we see the EMF is unique on the market only to be comparable with different measuring principles such as special weir or flume systems or ultrasonic in-pipe transmitter systems. Those might be a little more price attractive within the initial purchasing, however they need to be calibrated on site and as well inspected and maintained yearly by the operator. So this 
is not required for the tidal flux EMF, which comes pre-calibrated and only needs to be plugged and then it plays. So comparing the costs over a certain period, we see clear benefits with the tidal flux magmeter. Next key product in the list is our Aronda in measuring flow in the water and wastewater industry, the OptiFlux 2300. This flow meter has an integrated connectivity measurement, which gives an additional value next to the actual flow measuring. Furthermore, the values flow and conductivity can easily be transmitted via one cable via Profinet, which is an industrial Ethernet communication protocol. This can save money due to the fact that most of the small and mid-sized PLCs are standardized equipped with that Profinet input. So the features and applications concerning the unique grounding methods, virtual reference and the integrated connectivity measurement which are available with that meter will be explained later in more detail. Another key product are our special lined OptiFlux 4300 with a sturdy Teflon liner and our OptiFlux 5300 with an indestructible ceramic liner. Both flow meters are dedicated to be used for the flow measurement of highly abrasive or aggressive media. In water and wastewater applications, it is mostly used for dosage, dosage of chemicals like ferric 3 chloride which is uh, used for the elimination of phosphate. So both flow meters are suited to very, very small diameters and very low flows starting from 0.17 liters per hour with a diameter of 2.5 millimeters. So ideal when you have a drop per drop dosage. The next flow meter is applicable for the use in special greasy and fatty applications. So in many treatment plants with a fecal acceptance station or with a co-fermentation station, the operators are using normal EMFs, so normal MAC meters, which are not properly working. So the reason is that the high content of grease or fat will coat the electrodes quickly. And therefore the display is starting to show fluctuation values. So due to the special capacitive electrodes, which are installed behind the liner, this device has no direct contact to the media and therefore the performance and stability of that meter is independent of the content of fat or grease. So the sturdy ceramic liner guarantees also a stable measuring under harsh conditions. Yeah. So this flow meter is dedicated for the use in fecal acceptance stations or at the inlet of a co-fermentation station. Besides the flow measurement, we have of course some more important parameters to measure, such as pH or P or connectivity. This can be realized with the so-called SmartPad sensors. Those intelligent analytical sensors do not require an external transmitter as others do. The complete transmitter technology is integrated into the sensor head directly. So that means the signal is also directly converted into a measuring value within the sensor itself. That means you will not have any moisture influence, etc. This construction enables the user also to calibrate the sensor at any place. All relevant data are stored into the sensor directly. You can calibrate the sensor directly at the installation point, as you can see on the application picture, or even better to do it in the lab always under the same climatic conditions, which brings you up to a four times longer lifetime of the sensor. So all smart, smart pad sensors can be installed in already existing infrastructure due to a standardized communication via 4 to 20 milliamps hard. Another device belonging to the analytical product portfolio is the sludge level meter to measure and manage the sedimentation tank level. In contrast to the widely used ultrasonic principle, the SLM 2100 uses an optical sensor that is immersed into the medium to measure the concentration of the suspended solids at different depths. The sensor travels up and down through the medium, continuously monitoring the local concentration of suspended solids or suspended solids content in the medium. The suspended solids concentration is measured using transmitted infrared light, which delivers precise measurements regardless of the sludge color changes. The medium to be measured is penetrated by a beam of light in the measuring gap of the sensor. The suspended solids and sludge particles absorb or reflect the light and thus weaken the intensity of the beam. So the 
attenuation of energy between the light source side and the receiver side of the measuring gap correlates directly to the level of concentration of particles, which can then be easily calculated. Compared to ultrasonic, which is an indirect measuring because it is beaming from the top, this is a direct measuring directly within the process. So with knowing the sludge concentration over the complete tank profile, you can easily increase the efficiency of your process due to the higher fillings and the resulting higher gravity thickening. You therefore need less energy for the mechanical dewatering of the sludge, which saves pure money. Next key measuring device is a level radar meter, which is contactless measuring the level in tanks such as high level water tanks, showing the picture on the left, or in open process wastewater basins, showing the picture on the right. Comparing the radar technology with the previous used ultrasonic level technology, you might have significant advantages. So far, normally ultrasonics were used due to the attractive price. So nowadays, almost all suppliers of level te measuring technology can offer a basic water radar meter, which is a comparable price attractive meter. Furthermore, operators will make use of the additional advantages such as its independency of pressure or temperature due to, due to the electronical wave, which is used. Ultrasonics are using an acoustical wave, which needs to be compensated. So obviously, this is not often to be realized. For example, when sunlight is heating up the converter housing, in which also the temperature compensation is installed, we see huge deviations because the temperature in the manhole, where the level is to be measured, is completely different. So radar is not sensitive to that phenomena and therefore, of course, more accurate. Especially in wastewater applications, we often have a small foam layer on top of the surface, which is also a sudden death factor for ultrasonics. Radar can easily measure through due to the better measuring dynamic. So a comparable effect is with having condensate within the manhole or installation spots. So radar is much less sensitive to lose the signal compared to ultrasonic. So generally, this 24 gigahertz device has a special drop antenna with a small beam angel to be installed in narrow applications. So IP68, NEMA 6P and the free field certification, which is meant uh, by LPR, level probing radar, as well as the TLPR, tank level probing radar, are of course standard. Another key device out of the flow portfolio is the ultrasonic flow meter Optisonic 7300 for measuring biogas. So the unique feature here are the option to output the flow and methane, which is bringing an additional value for the operators because they can immediately monitor the proper gas production in a co-fermentation station. So in this connection, the operator can decide about feeding the right quality of fat which they have buffered to control and ensure always the best gas production within the process. So due to the two XI current inputs and additional, as, an addition, as an additional option, this device can also compensate the temperature and pressure to enable the output of norm cubic meters if required. The Optimus 7400 Coriolis mass flow meter is an excellent measuring device for measuring sludge such as return or excess sludge. Comparing this device with a conventional MAC meter, the operator can make use of the additional feature to also display and output the density of the measured media. So this is easily to be realized with an offset calibration with the local conditions and the real values which might be different within the different plants due to the different sludge conditions. Another amazing feature of this device is the in-trained gas management called EGM, which allows to have air within the process. This unique function will compensate the content of air and therefore always guarantees the correct flow rate. Actually, the next key device is a pressure device, but we are measuring the level with it. So indeed, we are talking about a hydrostatic submersible level probe, which is often used in abstraction deep water wells to measure the groundwater level. 
The great advantage of this device is the material of the membrane. Very often are metallic membranes, membranes used which are very sensible against mechanical impacts or strokes or any other bumping influence, even dirt from the process. So therefore operators are making use of the indestructible ceramic membrane which brings the Optibar LC1010 with its standard configuration. In cases or applications where it is not possible or even not cost effective to break the pipeline to install an inflow measuring device, operators can make use of this alternative ultrasonic clamp-on flow meter, which can be used for water and even for wastewater pipelines. So the unique feature here is that this device can come as an auxiliary powered version or even as a battery operated version to be independent of power within the field. Those clamp-on devices are made for a permanent use, but mostly used as a control measuring to check certain processes and flow rates or consumptions. So the device can be used in three different size versions, which cover small diameters, such as diameter 15, half an inch, up to big diameters, up to diameter 4 thousandths, which is 160 inch. To ensure the appropriated water quality from the outlet of a waterworks or a water treatment plant, even up to the end user's water tap, we need to disinfect the water here and there. So this will be realized with chlorine, which is mainly reasonable due to the long sustainable depot effect and of course due to its cost efficiency compared to alternative disinfection methods. However, every country gives limit values for free chlorine remaining in potable water, which is mostly reg regulated by the local water authorities and regulations. As an example, we have 0.3 mg per liter as limit value for free chlorine at the waterworks outlet in Germany. In the US, it is much higher than in Germany. There we have 4 ppm, which, is, which means 4 mg per liter, and in Canada it seems to be a limit of 2 mg per liter. So anyway, the operators of such water distribution networks need to measure this free chlorine parameter to monitor this parameter to meet the regulations. Therefore, such analytical panel solutions where all required sensors, even the pH sensor, electronics and even the control valves are pre-installed, are more than welcome to be installed in such emergency chlorination applications. So the unique self-cleaning system of the chlorine sensor makes it independent of the cycle to be really used and therefore the sensor is always ready to operate. Those pre-installed analytical boards are available in almost all variants customers are requiring. On that slide we see a solution with a turbidity measurement which is used to monitor the quality of water behind a filter. The operator can control the filter backwash processes based on that values. Often such stability solutions are also used before UV disinfection modules to guarantee the appropriated quality of water which is required to make a UV module effective. Such solution boards are tailor-made and can be freely equipped with the required sensor or materials. In this case, the customer combined the turbidity with an ORP and a connectivity sensor, both, by the way, in a smart part version without the need of an external transmitter. Even the material of the board can vary between metal like stainless steel or versions of plastic like we see in the previous slide. Next application to be presented is a pressure application in an aeration tank. Pressure must be measured in the aeration pipe for aeration tanks. If the pressure rises, this could be an indication of clogging aerators or wear of the diaphragma. High pressure also leads to higher power consumption, which is one of the most important parameters to be adjusted to make such a plant more efficient. Due to the high adiabatic compression in depths up to 5 meter or deeper, the air has a temperature of up to 80 degrees Celsius, depending on the outside temperature of course. This leads to a heating of the water at the outflow and this causes lime to precipitate out of the water. This then blocks the fine pore aerators. Deeper pools create higher pressures due to the higher hydrostatic pressure. If the pressure rises too high, an acid Acetic acid or formic acid must be dosed, which dissolves the lime and releases the aerators. If the pressure drops again, the dosage of the acid can also be reduced. 
So by measuring the pressure and following this process, operators of mid-sized plants can easily save up to 380,000 kilowatt hours per year, which means approximately 150,000 euros, which is almost the same in dollar. To guarantee a fully automated measuring system, this pressure measurement in this application is switched to a PSC to control a certain limit value to dose the asset accordingly. So using such comparatively cost-effective devices in that application results in an enormous increase in efficiency. Last device within that chapter is a verification tool which makes it possible to verify the devices, especially the MAC meters. This is often required by legislation within the certain period. So the user can connect the tool to the field device and check if all internal parameters still meet the requirement or if a maintenance needs to be fulfilled. So if the accuracy can be verified with such a tool, all tested parameters will be stored and documented within a protocol to be printed, emailed or stored accordingly. So this handheld verification tool is of course suitable to be used outside even when you have a rainy day. Based on the presented key products, we are now heading to some dedicated key features to look into a deeper focus. First of all, we start to compare the most common grounding methods which are required when operating a MAC meter. Due to the measuring principle, it is mandatory to have a potential-free condition before and after the meter to only grab the voltage which was induced within the magnetic field within the meter. So most common method is to realize it via the counterflanges. Requirement for this is that the counterflanges have a conductive contact to the media, which means that the pipe should not be coated. If the counterpipe is coated and therefore has no conductive contact to the media, you normally use grounding rings, which are like washers to realize the conductive contact. The grounding cables will be connected to the grounding rings in this case. So you may consider resistiveness of the material of the grounding rings, which is of course dependent of the media in the pipe. Alternative methods to grounding rings are earthing electrodes which may save money, but on the other hand, bring an additional risk for a third leakage point. In this case, the electrode is connected to the sensor housing and medium with protective earth. Comparable to earthing electrode, we also use the reference electrode, which may also increase the risk for a potential leakage point, but may also save money compared to garnering rings. So when using devices with reference electrodes, those are not connected to the sensor housing, but only the sensor housing is connected to protective earth. To summarize all advantages of all methods and also have an additional cost saving, we can also offer the electronic grounding method virtual reference with all IFC 300 converter. This grounding method is working via the normal measuring electrodes and therefore will not increase the risk for a sensor leakage. Those measuring electrodes pick up the potential of the medium and this is used as a reference potential for the measuring. Furthermore, this method will be realized through an electronical unit within the converter and therefore it is not price dependent of the nominal diameter or the aggressiveness of the media. So one minor price adder will fully cover the grounding functionality. The installation teams also have a perceptible advantage due to the fact that they can save two gaskets while installation. And then, and of course, that this model is also retrofitable after initial installation. The importance of ensuring an optimal process is steadily increasing. Therefore, it is more and more important to have a multi-parameter measuring technology to provide as many information as possible. Especially in water treatment, it is of it utmost interest to extract the water with its best possible starting quality so that the downstream treatment process can proceed as efficiently as possible. Many operators extract the raw water from different sources. Surface water from dams or river bank filtrate are as much a part of it as groundwater from different aquifers. An indication of the mostly different qualities of the raw waters can often be given through the connectivity. The EMF flow meters, which are already installed in the pumping stations of the water abstraction wells, 
offer an integrated connectivity measurement as a standard. This enables an evaluation of the quality values and gives an indication of the quality of the raw water. Water management and sewer network management will be promoted to one of the future topics nowadays. Increasing heavy rain events and more and more sealed surfaces provide the operators of sewage networks with major challenges because the rain can no longer drain at the place of origin but must specifically derived or be treated in case of a load in wastewater treatment plants. The first flush of overflow at a starting rain event is here always particularly polluted because here contaminations of roads or concrete surfaces are washed away and discharged into the channel. Rainwater is thus a main cause of water and river pollution and must be handled with a special care in future. Up to now, most rainwater tanks are operated manually and not automated. So in heavy rain events, therefore a big amount of rainwater or mixed water can be discharged uncontrolled in the river. Legislation or regulations for measuring the amount and the quality of rainwater are currently under construction worldwide. Next to the flow measuring in partially filled pipelines, operators are therefore highly interested in measuring the quality by connectivity of the stormwater wastewater. Heavily fluctuating pollution of the stormwater, respectively wastewater, dependent on the pollution of the seed areas or caused by salt entry in the winter period or leaching of nitrate from fields in agriculture can easily be monitored by the integrated connectivity monitoring measurement in the partially filled EMF devices. Operators of wastewater treatment plants want to operate connectivity measurements already at strategically important points in the sewer network. On the one hand, this measurement provides an overview of the condition of the wastewater and on the other hand, with this measurement, the operator can detect an unauthorized discharge of illegal media. In general, the wastewater of an indirect discharger or a municipal catchment area has a known average connectivity. So if the measured electri electrical connectivity differs greatly from the average value, there's a reason to assume an unauthorized discharge. This then leads to further tests. Operators of sewage treatment plants and sewer networks use inductive sensors to measure electrical connectivity. This comes at considerable expense. In addition to the investment costs for the analytical conductivity measuring device, there are installation, wiring and maintenance costs to consider. Electrical conductivity is generally measured at pumping stations, gouge valves and sewage treatment plant intakes. Flow meters are also usually installed at these locations to perform this task. Today, the measurement task can be fulfilled by the already installed MAC meters through its integrated connectivity measurement. So the OptiFlux 2300 electromagnetic flow meter, EMF, simultaneously measures flow and electrical connectivity. The charts show the comparison of the accuracy of an inductive analytical measurement, orange curve, with the performance of the connectivity indication measurement of the EMF integrated connectivity green curve. You see that the basic accuracy of an analytical sensor cannot be reached, but the accuracy to monitor the values is absolutely sufficient enough. However, fast value changes can be detected immediately. Furthermore, the signal can be of course flattened by using an output compensation. The settable measuring range of the conductivity is 0 to 50,000 microsiemens per centimeter. We therefore cover almost all water types and qualities. A recalibration of the flow and conductivity measurement is not necessary. Furthermore, an on-site calibration of the conductivity measurement is possible. So this enables an exact compensation of the local conditions under implication of the local environment. Here you indeed see a real application in Finland, where the flow and the connectivity of raw water in two parallel pipes is measured. You can clearly see the graph of the connectivity measurement, which is more or less compatible to each other. Also, the absolute values displayed in the chart are showing similar values. 
Next to this supportive additional measuring, the nowadays flow meters also have more features such as the integrated diagnostics to provide information about the status of the device, about the process, but also about the functional safety. Alarm messages for possible maintenance actions are mandatory. Depending on the converter type, the device will provide you such information about detection of gas bevels or electrode corrosion or coatings, as well as liner damages. The device can also check if it is still running within the given accuracy ranges and if the flow profile is still good enough. All additional parameters can be transmitted by several output communications such as analog or digital by Profinet, Profibus or Mudbus. Well, all presented key devices and features can be found within our application configurator on our homepage, krone.com. When you scroll the starting page all the way down, you will find the chapter Case Studies. Click on that and you will directly reach all relevant application or case studies. Furthermore, you can select the topic and the sub-industry by using the selector on the left-hand side. It's like a configurator. Another way to get there is when you click on products in the horizontal menu. So when you now select a product, you will reach the product related page. Scrolling all the way down, you will then directly see the related application reports which are belonging to the certain product. Last chapter for today's webinar session is the introduction into an online planning tool which makes the planning engineer's life easier and more supportive. This planning tool is actually made for the compilation of tender documents for flow, level, an analysis, pressure and temperature instrumentation within water and wastewater applications. Furthermore, this tool provides a lot more information and additional features to support today's planner's work, such as 2 or 3D drawings or calculation software. You can reach the tool when you open your internet browser and browse planningtool.com. Due to the online availability, no installation is required, which makes the IT people very, very, very happy. Users will be guided through the application to the required measuring device. The function of this intro page is to pre-select the language, which is automatically set according to your browser settings and the industry to be planned. This is due to the reason that there are different key devices which are dedicated and allocated to a certain industry. However, you can easily change the industry within the tool again and again. The water industry normally consists of three sub-industries such as water abstraction, water treatment and water distribution. Within the horizontal menu, you can select between those and will reach the dedicated plan components and detailed processes. So every process is shortly explained, which makes the tool also attractive to students or rookies. When clicking wastewater industry, we reach that overview, which is displaying the wastewater industry in an overview. So this passes different steps such as sewer network, mechanical pretreatment, biological treatment, sludge treatment and effluent. So these five steps are part of the wastewater treatment process. So in case you are a planner or another user, you can mouse over the different processes and see they are nested and linked to the de detailed processes. Such as the biological treatment. We are just get into the area to be planned. The biology is predestinated for an example because here we can find a lot of measuring spots we recommend. For the reason that the engineer is not only the planner for the plant or plant component, but usually a consultant, he has to be informed about the basic operating mode of the plant component to be planned. So therefore we pro provide the user with that needed information located above every detailed view. Within the graphics, we can see the blue colored icons, which are named and linked to the dedicated measuring devices. For an example, we decide to click the flow button in the return sludge pipe. So we get then two devices to choose. In many cases, you get only one device, which is available at this point. But in some cases, mostly flow or level, you get more alternatives for your measuring points. Like in this case, we get two devices. However, we only recommend the most suitable device types at this point with, of course, additional information to get the right choice. To now step deeper into the tool, you have to register once 
with the most common data. Just follow the registration wizard to get the full access. We are now no longer in the general application view, but we stepped into the detailed view of the recommended device, in this case, a Mac meter. You see a new horizontal navigation appeared, which provided, provides the user all information which are necessary for the planning process, such as information of the device itself, or also very important, the installation conditions, how to correctly install the device and what is allowed or should be avoided to ensure a proper installation. Furthermore, you will also get information according to CAD drawings or downloads are also provided like calculation software or of course the datasheet or the manual. Finally, we have reached the heart of the tool, the tenor document. As you can see on the left hand, a special configuration column has appeared, which is connected to the text in the middle. Everything what you select in the menu will automatically be transferred to the tenor text. Therefore, you cannot make a mistake. You cannot choose an option which is not possible. This tenor text is a vendor neutral text based on our agency guidelines. After configuration of the device, you can download the text via Word, Excel, PDF or GAP, which is a special format for the planning software. For users who already know the measuring principle, there is also a kind of quick search integrated. This page offers a widespread about all devices which are used in this tool. The first column describes the measuring principle, followed by the device name, and finally, last column describes the version of the device, such as partially filled or better operated Mac meter. So please do not hesitate to have a look on it. Just click planningtool.kroner.com and feel free to use it as you need it. Finally, to bring it in a nutshell, Kroner is a full instrumentation vendor for flow, level, analytics, pressure and temperature. The water and wastewater market is one of Kroner's most important ones, indeed the second biggest industry behind the chemical one. We know which device to be used for the respective application. We have the dedicated key product for that. We know which device feature will bring an effort to our customers in their application. We always have the right tool to support customers' daily life, like planning tool or configured. Kroner has a large installed base. Kroner has also the most accurate calibration capability with the largest diameter and flow rates in the world. So we have now reached the end of the presentation for today. If you have any questions, we are of course at your disposal and will answer them accordingly. So we thank you very, very much for attending this webinar and really appreciate your attention. So hope you enjoyed listening to this session. Thank you very much, Michael, for this uh, great uh, presentation. It was very um, interesting. So yeah, uh, we have some questions um, from our um, visitors. So the first question is, how can you um, output the pressure signal from a flow meter. Yeah, well, uh, the pressure and the temperature sensor is available in combination with our Waterflux 3070, so the battery operated uh, flow meter. Actually, this mag meter um, yeah, is battery operated and therefore a conventional 4 to 20 milliamp uh, analog output cannot be considered. But uh, yeah, however, to transmit all signals um, which are provided, such as uh, flow and the pressure and also the temperature, uh, we are using a Modbus communication with a sequent operation. Okay, perfect. Um, directly the next question to uh, some output question. So how can you output the connectivity signal from the flow meter? Yeah, uh, the feature to have the connectivity already integrated in the uh, device is available with uh, all sensor types, uh, with all flow meter sensor types using the IFC 300 converter. And um, yeah, this enables us to either use uh, an additional 4 to 20 milliamp analog output 
In this case, you would have two, so one for the flow and one for the connectivity. Or you are using the communication protocols like Profibus or like uh, Profinet or Modbus or, for example, Foundation Fieldbus. Okay, thank you very much, Michael. Um, yeah, next question. Um, do the flow meter have the required drinking water certificates? Yeah, of course. Uh, all flow meters uh, which we operate in a water application will, of course, have all the required uh, drinking water certifications. So to just um, name some of it, we have uh, the um, ICF, which is relevant for France. For example, we have the DVW, uh, DVGW W270, uh, respectively the KTW or UBA, which is relevant for Germany. Then we have the NSF uh, for the US market or the WRAS for the UK market. So yeah, all up-to-date certificates, of course, are available via our website. So you just need to open uh, www.krona.com and then uh, under the download, you will find them all listed. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, next question. Um, can we use existing remote data communication? Shall I do this one? Yeah, indeed you can. So uh, due to the fact that uh, our devices communicate with uh, several standard protocol types, uh, it is uh, no issue to even uh, connect to already existing data uh, uh, communication infrastructure, for example. So almost all data logger will speak uh, impulses or analog or Modbus. Yeah? So it can happen that uh, we here and there, there need a Modbus uh, mapping, for example, to, uh, between the uh, flow meter and between the data logger. But uh, this is available with almost all typical brands in the world. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for this answer. Um, next one. Is it also allowed to install the flow meter without inlet and outlet also in big diameters? So good question. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, the answer is very easy. Yes, you can. So the water flux sensor, uh, which we have looked to is, uh, or can be indeed used up to a diameter of uh, diameter 600, which means uh, 24 inch without any requirements for straight inlets or straight outlet uh, sections. So all installation positions are possible and therefore you won't have uh, the need for additional pipe work or extended uh, space. So yes, a diameter range from diameter 25 to 600. Perfect, okay. Uh, next question, sorry, but it's not so <laughs> easy to read. Um, what? Is signal of central transmission. So yeah, I'm sure. I hope you you get it. Um, how to configure it with all the external transmitter? So well, I think that question referred to our analytical devices, which we have presented without the need for an external transmitter. And um, yeah, the signal of the sensor transmission is a 4 to 20 milliamp uh, hard signal. So the raw signal is directly created uh, within the sensor. And of course, you can uh, connect the sensor via hard modem to the laptop to set the 4 to 20 milliamp uh, range. Yeah. So I think uh, that answers the question. Yeah, perfect. So. If it was uh, another question or if it was not the answer you needed, please feel free to, to contact uh, Michael via email and uh, he can send you uh, the, the answer for your questions. Yeah, so the last question for today. Um, is the water flux affected by turbulences, for example, air bubbles? Uh, and how does it can be detected with the empty pipe? Hmm. 
Uh, well, so air bubbles uh, in the process are not a real problem once it is uh, not too much. Yeah? Of course, uh, the ideal case uh, is without any air bubbles. So, and depending on the converter type, um, can we detect when a certain air bubble volume has exceeded, for example, and then an alarm a limit value, a threshold, for example, can be set yeah? when a, a special air bubble uh, uh, volume has reached. So, and um, the other question was about the empty pipe. So the empty pipe is uh, realized through the normal measuring electrodes. So it can be detected um, uh, uh, yeah, when, the, when, the, when the tube is partially filled. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, due to the lack of time, I would say let's answer all other questions via email, all additional questions via email. Of course, you can send us um, additional questions um, via email and um, yeah, you can contact Michael directly. So thank you very much from my side. Thank you, Michael, for this great presentation. Of course, the last word um, is on your side, Mike. Yeah, I would also like to thank you all for listening our today's webinar. And uh, yeah, we are always at your disposal. So when you have any more question, as Fabian already uh, said, please do not hesitate to write us an email or myself directly and I will answer them directly. So thank you for listening and uh, have a nice one. So bye bye. Okay, thank you. Uh Okay, ladies and gentlemen, looks like we have another one question from John Lee. What is the range of pressure measure for water flux? Is it fixed or depend on flow meters flange order? So, Mr. Ed, do you want to answer it? Yes, sure. Yes, um, as we look to the range of our um, uh, water flux, we are uh, talking about the small diameters, 25 until uh, 200, where we can achieve this uh, 60 bar. Uh, for the diameters above, uh, say 250 up till uh, DN600, um, we have to face that we are dealing with uh, 10 bar uh, pressure rate. Hope this answers your question. Thank you, Mr. Ed. So it's like there's no more question. We have come to end to our to end of, of our sixth session today. We hope we hope that with today's session, all your questions are be answered. If you have any other inquiry, please visit Corner Virtual Booth in our virtual exhibition hall. That's all from us. Once again, thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much for listening. Thank you.